it is realistic to expect a lifetime of happiness in a monogamous relationship. But there's more than that. It's possible to keep your love alive. The good news is that we know how to do that. And we know how to help you and teach you how to get there. We have a blueprint. It's not a guessing game. Are you married or in a committed relationship looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship? You are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Stuart Fensterheim, The Couples Expert, with another episode of my weekly podcast on love and relationships. This is episode 121 of our podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that we've all heard about. It's called monogamy. And is it realistic to think that when you make a commitment to your partner, that you will have a lifetime of monogamy? Is that even possible? This subject comes up a lot when I'm seeing couples in my office who are considering marriage. Divorce can be so incredibly ugly and painful. People are trying to be preventative and make that choice to be faithful to that one person forever. But they have to ask themselves this question. Can I accept having only one partner for the rest of my life? It used to be asked more often by the men, but now the women are. They're considering this question, which is a bit of a surprise, but with some of the changes in our society, it actually makes a lot of sense. But the whole topic is a little daunting to think that you're going to be with only one person forever and never have another partner. It's a big decision to commit to that. But I'm here to tell you that, yes, it is absolutely realistic and possible to have one person meet all of your needs and to have that one partner for life. And I'm going to get into that. But before I do, I wanted to share something about my week. Last week, I went to a wedding. I just returned from my nephew's wedding in Chicago. It was one of the biggest weddings I've been to in quite a while, and I was actually surprised how big it was. There were about 200 people in it, and it was at this gorgeous setting called Farmington Lake in Chicago. I wasn't in the wedding, but we had a wonderful get-together at the rehearsal dinner and then later at the reception. I had a great time with my wife and her family. I always think, maybe it's a hazard of being a therapist, that when I see the wedding, the couple so happy and so in love, how many things are out there that might be waiting to spoil that happiness? How difficult it is for people to maintain that incredibly loving feeling throughout your marriage. And it really goes to the heart of our topic today on monogamy, because if you're monogamous, if you have a relationship with that partner and you look at the bride and how gorgeous she is, and the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the family all excited for this couple to start their life together, some of us in the audience who have been around the block a few times going to cross our fingers and cross our toes and hope that their love that we see in their eyes will stay forever. One of the things before I get into the topic, I wanted to remind you that you can subscribe to these podcasts, the Couples Expert Podcast on iTunes. I welcome your comments and suggestions, and please take a moment to give me your honest thoughts and a review on how you think we're doing and what we can do to make this podcast better. The more input I get from all of you, my community, the better this can be to meet the needs that you have. And I want our topic, just like the one today, to really be something that this podcast is your go-to podcast on relationships. Our topic today is whether it's realistic to have a monogamous relationship for your entire life. 
But first, let's define intimacy and monogamy as well as polyamory for you. Regarding intimacy, now what is that? Intimacy is not sex. And I've stressed that quite a bit through the years. Sex does not equal intimacy. Although intimacy is a key component in having a sexual relationship and a happy sexual life. True intimacy really requires you to be able to be authentic and vulnerable and raw, really showing your guts to your partner. To show them what you don't show of yourself to anyone else in this world, that they are the fortunate ones that can see all of you. And they see it because you show it to them. Monogamy and how that fits with this is devoting yourself in this emotional, physical, sexual, and spiritual way to one individual, to a single partner, to have that partner be your love focus, your love relationship, to be a couple exclusive of everyone else in the world. And that, that there's no one more special to you than they are. And that the two of you have built a foundation based on love, togetherness, fun, and only having it be with one person that gets your heart, your thoughts, and your soul. Polyamory is the practice of having a romantic attachment to more than one person at a time. This typically is a lifestyle choice that people make and the level of commitment with that varies. If you have decided that you want to have a relationship with someone in a monogamous relationship, you have to do some work to maintain the excitement and happiness with that partner. You have to surround yourself with people who understand love and have to make a choice and commitment to yourself as to what the value of this relationship is. We need to read books, go to workshops, get educated, do couples workshop. These are the ingredients in a mature relationship. I like this quote about long lasting love that Esther Perel has and goes like this. Love is a vessel that contains both security and adventure, and commitment offers one of the greatest luxuries of our time, and that is time. Marriage is not the end of romance, it's the beginning. So people sometimes have to choose, and it really is a choice, I believe, but what the choice has to be is a choice that you want for yourself, not something you're doing for someone else. Whether you choose to have a polyamorous relationship or the one that I would choose and the only one that I could have, which is a monogamous one with one partner, there's so much pain and anguish that I see that comes up in these other relationships. And some of that is a lack of choice that people make for themselves that this is the life that they want and that they need. The biggest message here that I want to send to everyone listening is yes. Yes, 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 yes. And if I could say it a hundred other times, I would say it again. Yes, 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 yes. It is realistic to expect a lifetime of happiness in a monogamous relationship. But there's more than that. It's possible if, if you do what it takes to keep your love alive, to stay connected and bonded and to be in a relationship where both you and your partner are committed to paying attention to what it takes for both of you to feel important to one another. The good news is that we know how to do that. And we know how to help you and teach you how to get there. We have a blueprint. It's not a guessing game. If there's been a problem that's pulled you apart, we know how to get you back. 
and we know how to fix relationships, not that they're broken and not that we're like a broken, you know, a broken model or anything, but that when there's pain and anguish and hurt and shame and guilt and heartache and past missing attachments, and we talked about that last week, we know how to help you make it work. But the thought of having one sex partner forever brings a lot of worry about needing that extra oomph or excitement and newness that might not come from a spouse who you've had for 30 some years or more. There's a fear of being able to really be satisfied and not wanting to hurt the partner that you like and love and are friends. But can I live up to that? Can I live up to that expectation? The fear is that the sex will become boring or routine. And it's a very real fear. I don't want to minimize that at all. When my wife told her friends, for example, that we were getting married, what some of them said to her is they expressed some sympathy instead of, yay, congratulations. They said, oh. I'm sorry. Now, why did they say that? The message that they were sending her was, I guess the lovemaking is going to stop now. That's the attitude some of us truly have, is that when you get married, your sex life becomes boring and dies. How sad is that for a society than for a people that when we think about getting married, that's supposed to be the most exciting time of your life, just think about it. We do the bachelor parties and bachelorette parties. Why do we do those? I think the unspoken is we're doing this because we feel like, whoop, this is the last time you can get to really have this kind of fun. That's not true. But the idea that people live with is that once people are married, they stop trying to be exciting to your partner. Are you someone who shows up in your relationship? Will you do what it takes to keep your relationship alive, exciting, fresh, and new? I really encourage you to consider that being with a partner whom you trust, who you can be authentic with, it opens up the door to so many other things. Having all of that leads to a more satisfying sex life. When you have that level of trust, you are free to discuss all aspects of love and sexuality that keep your relationship satisfying. The responsibility for this lies with both of you. It's essential to make a commitment to monogamy for yourself, as I mentioned earlier, not for the other person. It carries the weight of that responsibility that you're giving the assurance to your partner and more importantly to you that both of you are responsible to live that commitment. You both have the responsibility of your behavior. It doesn't matter what the relationship is like right now. If you choose to stray, it's a choice you make, and you have to live with the consequences. This also requires that you choose your partner wisely and carefully understanding the attachment need that you both have and what it's going to take for you to feel loved by that one special person. If you both have the same attachment needs, that's wonderful. But how do we figure that out? And I'm a really strong advocate, and I did a podcast recently on premarital counseling, that every couple should have premarital counseling. I don't care how good the relationship is, how strong you think you are, how strong of a bond you have, how good of a sex life you have, unless you take your commitment serious and be preventative, you're opening the door to problems. And premarital counseling isn't the answer, but it's the beginning to start saying, I love us, I care enough about us to give it the time and energy that's necessary to find out what we need to do to keep this strong. We have to be emotionally close and physically intimate. 
that's also necessary in that. What's also necessary in that is understanding your own sexual desires and needs. Eroticism is a topic a lot of people don't talk about. We talk about frequency. We talk about quality of the physical act and what we're doing, what positions, and, and whether or not to use sex toys or not. We talk about those things. But what we don't talk about is what turns you on. What is eroticism mean to you and what makes something erotic? So we have to have eroticism and sex play in a relationship to keep your love life alive. Keeping the excitement of being with each other day in and day out. When you have that close connection, you're able to have the trust in each other where you can discuss anything. Do you want to be tied up? What about role play? What about leather? What about different touches and anal intercourse? What is it that drives you crazy? Having conversations about that are really, really important. What about s and &M? All those things. When the movie Fifty Shades of Grey came out, there was a lot of hoopla about it. And some people had a really negative connotation. What I liked about it, and actually did an article on this, on coming up with discussion items, talking points, with the movie Fifty Shades of Grey. And I, my understanding is there's now a new one, and I haven't seen it, I know nothing about it, called Fifty Shades of Beyond or something to that effect. What I loved about that movie was that it allowed couples who generally saw it together to really begin to talk about their relationship in a different kind of way. We need to trust each other enough to have those dialogues, to discuss anything and everything about your sexual needs. And you and your partner being willing to explore those things without holding back anything, talking about your fantasies, talking about different things that help both of you feel your relationship is fresh and alive. You have to have an authentic relationship. And so many couples, including, by the way, and, and I sort of don't want to go off track too much here, but there are so many therapists out there that don't feel comfortable talking about sex. And my opinion on this is that unless you're able to have that dialogue, you shouldn't be a couples counselor. Work with individuals, and even then, uh, I think it's a problem. We need to be in the presence of people that understand what it's going to take to have a relationship as a couple. And if your therapist, if you're in couples counseling, hasn't approached the subject of sex, Shame on them, and you guys need to bring it up. Take responsibility there. We have to have an authentic relationship where you both know you're important and loved. Your partner is the one you chose to have a monogamous relationship, and it's for life. Don't shortchange yourself or each other. One of the things I'd like to remind you is that you can subscribe to Couples Expert YouTube channel I do a three minutes with Stuart and I talk about this topic. And as a matter of fact, I just recorded some videos on monogamy and how to have a monogamous relationship. And you can catch that on my YouTube channel, the Couples Expert YouTube channel. And if you go to my website, which is www.thecouplesexperts.com, that's experts plural, dot com, you can also subscribe to my Stuart's Daily Notes which are tips and advice every single day on making your relationship with your partner closer and more connected. And doing that in five minutes a day, you can have a different relationship. Check it out, it's on YouTube. The last part of our dialogue today is about once you've created this authentic, close and loving relationship with your partner, what do you do? The one person you've chosen to be with for life 
How do you maintain that? Let's face it. As we're getting older, our bodies change. Our physical life goes through changes and it affects how we see ourselves and our sex life and intimacy. We don't want to minimize. We're talking about for a life. And you know, I, I remember when I was in graduate school, it was really interesting. I was in graduate school and I, one of the required classes was on sexuality. And I was there and the, the instructor showed, it was fairly a pornographic movie and it was a couple making love very graphically. And I turned around and there were lots of people chuckling and some people who were sort of turned off and almost disgusted. The reason for that is the couple on the film, on the video, were 85 years old and they were making love. The ageism is alive and well. We all, as we get older, have different challenges. And if we're with a partner for life, hopefully we're going to be with that person for the rest of our life and having a sexual relationship. My hope for myself is that 90 to 100 years old, if, now let's go 100 because I'm talking about if when I pass away, how I want to die is right after a climax. Now, that would be wonderful. Because what it would say, it would be exactly how I feel about my wife and my relationship is that we are so sensual and our touch is one of the best things that we have for each other, our vulnerability and authenticity. And wouldn't that be a wonderful statement that making love ended my life. That's what I hope for all of you. But we have to face something. As we get older, our bodies change. Our physical life goes through changes and it affects so much. These changes can bring erectile issues and postmenopausal women experience worries about their libido and dryness. Problems with vaginal dryness or painful intercourse are common as women age. One of the saddest things that I've dealt with recently was I was working with this couple. And what I learned is that this woman was in excruciating pain with her partner because their sex life was about irritation and rawness in her vaginal area. And she didn't even want to talk about it with him. And it was a quick fix once we began to talk about it. Just think about all that pain that she had to endure because of a lack of understanding and authenticity and vulnerability and fear. We have to talk to our partners about these things. All of this needs to be talked about and addressed as it's happening. Our body image is affected, and when you're with that one person, you're able to help one another navigate through this, expressing the love that we have for one another so that both of you feel good about yourself. How you appear to your partner is so very important, and knowing that your partner sees you as a sexy and desirable needs to be talked about quite a bit as we age. Also true when we're younger. As your relationship continues, that playfulness becomes more and more important. When you're with that someone for a long time, your comfort level with that person deepens. You can be more comfortable being spontaneous and fun with one another. I was talking in a video recently about me dancing along my living room in my underwear when watching like American Idol or those types of shows and the two of us just cracking up that's a wonderful memory that I have. And it was something that gets me through rough times that my wife and I can have that kind of fun. When's the last time the two of you went to adult sex shop? What would that be like? What about role playing? If you're thinking about having a relationship with someone else, have your partner play a role. Let your partner be that other person. Don't risk 
acting those things out, those fantasies, let you and your partner fantasize together. How exciting would that be? One of the best things about a long-term monogamous relationship is this comfort level that you could talk about anything that excites you sexually or that you want to explore together. The only rule is that you both are on the same page and understand whatever consequences might come with that. Open marriage is something that some people have been playing around with. I highly do not recommend this. It, it really creates such problems. And I have a number of couples that have experimented with that, thinking that was gonna make the relationship more exciting. And I have not yet had a couple who have done that, that haven't come back regretting it. You need to really think about what it might do to your relationship. It can be seen as a negative to have a relationship that's predictable. I totally disagree with that. I think it's positive to have a relationship where you know how to turn your partner on and what the end result's gonna look like. There's so much less pressure when you know that. Having a monogamous relationship means you can share yourself in all ways, emotionally, physically, sexually, and know that you'll be loved for who you are. I want you to think about that this week. I really want to thank you for joining me again. And I want to let you know that next week, my topic is about defining trust in a relationship. Your partner is the person you should be able to trust above all else. And it really has run through the course of this podcast today. So are you in that kind of relationship where the level of trust is where you want it to be? If not, check us out next week, because that's what we'll be addressing. I hope you'll listen to this discussion. So thank you once more for joining me on this podcast today. You are the reason I do these. Until next time, stay in love and stay connected. So long.